Welcome to Pick 6 TV. I'm Dylan Harper. And I'm Kyle Stanley. All right, our second episode today we're excited about. Not as excited as the first, of course. All right, going to start off with basketball. So we've seen some uh, good playoff games so far. Which one surprises you the most? You know, Boston and Chicago, I think, has been a great series so far. You know, both coming down to the last seconds, overtime in the first game, then the last shot on this one. It was a great series so far. They were. Now, who do you expect to win this series? Do you think Chicago's going to be able to pull the upset, or do you think Boston's going to hang on? You know, I'm a big fan of the upset, so I'm pulling for Chicago on this one. And, you know, they're going back to Chicago, two games there. I think they can pull it off. Interesting. It, will be, it should be an exciting series to watch if it looks like this. Now, Boston forward Leon Poe is gone for the postseason, too, so that's Poe and Garnett, two tall players. Yeah. Is this going to have a, an effect down the line? Yeah, I mean, obviously, Garnett's having a huge effect. They're just not playing like they were earlier in the season, and, uh, you know, Lose one more player, it's always always a concern. Yeah, we'll see if uh, rebounds start to be a problem for him. All right, moving on to football. I'm going to go to our predictions, going division by division here. And last week we did the West in the AFC and NFC. Now we're sticking with the North, and we're going to start with the NFC. What team is going to win this division? You know, I'm going to go with the Chicago Bears. They picked up nice. Jake Cutler, and I think that's a great pick for him. you got the franchise quarterback, a guy you can really build the team around in Jake Cutler. And, you know, I think they have a talented defense and a, a good enough run game that they can they can really pull it off. Interesting. Yeah, we saw as Matt Forte played well last year in Chicago. Yeah. And Jay Cutler, obviously, is a good talent, is a good talented quarterback. A lot of people are saying he's going to regret this going to Chicago. Do you think he will? You know, I really don't think he will. I think, you know, he's coming into a much better team. You know, a team that didn't have a That's quarterback a last year, but they have a good defense. Matt Forte, I think, will really flourish under with Jay Cutler there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, think it's a, I think he's in a better situation this year. Now, I'm sure the Viking fans and Packer fans are wondering why we uh, didn't have their team up there. Got any explanation yeah. for them? You know, I think I think the, the Vikings have a real shot at this division, but I don't know if Adrian Peterson is enough to carry you to win this division, you know. You have a great run game, your defense could use some work, and you need a, you need a good quarterback, and you just don't have that right now. Yeah, when I'm making my predictions, I tend to side with the team with the quarterback. And, you know, I hate doing that because I really like yeah. defensive play, but Chicago's got the better defense, it seems, overall. Although, Vikings defense did show a lot of signs. Uh, they did have the number one rush defense last year. Yeah. And what about how is Aaron Rodgers going to play? Because we saw, you know, his progression, and I don't think he was bad, but is he going to be better? Is this what we're gonna, all we're going to see from him? You know, I think Aaron Rodgers last year showed moments of brilliance, and I think he, that'll, that'll continue to grow. He'll get better. It takes time. It's only his first season actually playing. I know he had a lot of time under Brett Favre, but that doesn't mean a whole lot if you're not actually playing in the game. So I think he'll get true. better. Now, what one of these teams in this division, and sorry Lions fans, but I think you guys understand why we're not picking your team. What one of these teams in this division has the best chance to win a Super Bowl? You know, not next year maybe, but I don't see any of them winning it next year. But which one's going to win the Super Bowl first? The Super Bowl first. I think, you know... I'm gonna have to go with the Chicago Bears. You know, Jay Keller is him. I think he's a great quarterback, a great player. And on a team that, that has talent like the Bears, I think they're gonna be hard to stop. hmm Interesting. Should be a should be a close division though, either way. Alright, moving on to baseball, a little bit of baseball. Some interesting news. The Yankees in Cleveland finished a series. now Yankees are in Oakland, but uh, their series in Cleveland showed twenty home runs total and the majority of them to right field. Is there any? There's been talk about a certain, you know, a wind velocity carrying out to right field. There's been talk about that the pitching has just been terrible for the Yankees, which is a possibility. Is there, is there a uh, one an answer to this? Is it just a coincidence? Is it what's going on? You know, I think it's too early to tell if it if it really is a wind tunnel sort of thing. But you know, we'll start to figure this out later on towards you know the year if it keeps continuing, and you know, their pitching could just be terrible. <laughs> that's, that's all that's obviously a possibility. You know, they did spend a lot of money on pitching. Is this you know, if this is what we're gonna see out of this like Sabathia, you know, he gave up I believe seven runs today. Is is this what we're gonna see out of him and is this is this gonna set back their franchise at all if this is what they get out of him? I think I think Sabathia will, will get better. I mean he he is a great player. I think he's one of the probably the best pitcher in the league in my opinion. And I think I think he'll live up to that. I think he is good at it's just a lot of pressure playing mm-hmm. in New York for your first season. I think another New York pitcher might have something to say about that in Johan yeah. Santana. All right, now sticking with baseball, the Marlins are playing really well. They did lose two to the Pirates, and the Pirates are not necessarily a great team, but they they do have the best overall record in Major League Baseball. So what is more likely, the Yankees staying bad or the Marlins staying good? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Yankees staying bad. Interesting. How come? Yeah, they just can't seem to get it together. I like the Marlins will continue to play well. and um, But I think they'll have their ups and downs for the season. You have bad stretches. Everyone does. 
you got 162 games. A couple of those games are going to have bad games. Mm-hmm. So, but I think the Yankees are going to be pretty consistently bad. Interesting. I, you know, I think another point with the Marlins is Hanley Ramirez, who I picked actually for MVP, is he, you know, he hasn't really gotten his hot streak yeah. going yet, and that's a good sign though if they're playing this well without him. Yeah, if you, I mean, if you can be leading the league without Hanley Ramirez <laughs> playing like he normally does, then that's a great sign. And now for the Yankees, you know, them staying bad is just they have so much talent. That's that's the problem I have with the Yankees. They have, I think, more talent than anyone else in the league, and they just can't seem to make anything happen with it. Interesting. It'll be a very exciting race in the uh, for the Marlins, certainly. And the Yankees, it could be not as exciting as New York fans hope. All right, now moving on to the AFC North. And, you know, this division always seems to be close every single year. You never know what team's going to win it. Who's going to win it? The Pittsburgh Steelers are a runaway with this division this year. I think I should tell our fans I was joking. The Steelers always win this division. Except for Baltimore a few times and the Bengals once. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> no, it's just the I think, you know, obviously the Ravens are a consistent team. They're a great team. But they lost a lot of good players. I think if they want to compete with the Steelers on that level, Flacco's going to have to step it up a lot more. I think he's going to in the second season. I think he's going to improve. But I think the team overall is going to be worse than they were last year because they just they lost too many playmakers. Interesting. Yeah, Flacco's a guy I really like. I really like his style of play. And, you know, they call him a game manager. I really don't like that term because you got to make plays. But yeah. it seems like Baltimore should have gone out already at this point and got a good offensive weapon for him, and they haven't done that yet. You know, I would have liked to see seen maybe an Anquan Bolden, which there was some interest, but it doesn't look like something's getting done. I mean, do they need to do this, or am I just, you know, am I a little greedy? <laughs> you know, they call him the game manager, which I never got. It's his rookie season, and he comes out and he led the team. And to come out in your rookie season and do that is, I mean, pretty much unheard of. And that really would have been the story of the year last year if it wasn't for Matt Ryan that guy doing what he did last year. <laughs> I think I think he will be great. I think he really will be a great quarterback. He doesn't seem to get too flustered. I mean, he had some, his moments. Again, it was his rookie year, but he seems to keep it under control really well and be a good leader of that team. So I think if they find a good weapon, I think I think he'll become a great quarterback. Should be interesting. I remember the last quarterback who early in his year, you know, lost the AFC Championship game, Ben Roethlisberger, won the Super Bowl the next year. So maybe that's yeah. a good path for Flacco. Uh, sticking one more thing with this division. Troy Polamalu, Ed Reed, two phenomenal safeties, and I'd like to have either on my team if I was making a team. Which one of these guys would you rather take? Which one do you think is better? And which one do you think deserves to be in the Madden cover? Because they're both in the running. You know, I get the, the same answer for all three questions. I, I'm going to go with the better player. This is a guy I'd, I'd obviously rather have, and I think he deserves to be on the Madden cover. That's Troy Polamalu. You're holding us in suspense there for a minute. Yeah, you know, um... I get Ed Reed has more interceptions and, and does a lot with those, but you know, Polamalu at the top of his game is, is just unmatched in the secondary. And um, you know, he's he's great at getting the ball, he's great at getting tackles for losses and tackles and just in general. He's he really is just a force that I, I don't think Ed Reed is. I think Ed Reed's a great great at finding the ball. Mm-hmm. But at the r- other aspects of safety, he can't keep up with Polamalu. Yeah, that's a good point on that topic you make about there are a lot of, there are many aspects to a game, but you see some like at the safety position, obviously interceptions gets magnified, but there are a lot of other crucial positions, and and it's not the same position at running back. It seems like is you know another topic outside of that. We're done with the AFC North. Steelers winning, Bengals not. It's a surprise, but you know the running back position obviously is one um, I'd like to talk about for a minute. It seems like everybody talks about the rush yards, the rush yards, the rush yeah. yards. One guy, Roger Craig, I know you know who he is. 2,000 oh, yeah. yards in three seasons. Yeah, yeah. But half of them were passing yards. And this guy's not in the Hall of Fame. Is that fair? Or? No, it's not. I mean, you know, a yard is a yard, whether you get it through the air or on the ground. So to get 2,000 yards in a season is incredible, relevant of how you do it. And um, I don't think, I think it, it gets overlooked a lot of the time because it's not rushing yards. Mm hmm. And, you know, it doesn't matter, right? If you catch it and then and get five yards that way, it's still five yards. It's a very good point. Well, that'll do it for us on Pick 6 TV. We're going to be bringing you a lot of draft coverage this week, so check out the site. we got a lot of rumors. going to be updating them constantly. All right, that'll do it for us.